one type of DIY project I can't get enough of, it's custom doors. I've shared tutorials for all different kinds over the years, and I love that there's so many ways you can add character to an existing door or build your own from scratch, even if you're a beginner on a budget. For today's project, I'll walk you through the steps we took to build our own custom sliding double doors in the Riverside Retreat. Between the living room and the downstairs bonus room is a 5 foot opening, and we needed a way to separate the rooms and add privacy. Sliding doors were the perfect solution because they wouldn't take up much space, and they could also be a nice design feature in the living room. I already had an idea of what I wanted them to look like, so I spent some time drawing it up on the computer and figuring out the measurements. With my plans in place, I was able to source all of my materials at Lowe's. Since I kept the design simple, all I needed were several 1 by 3 foot boards and two 4 by 8 foot sheets of smooth plywood. I also found these really cool antique iron poles for the front and simple recessed poles for the back. There's a handful of basic tools you'll need to build the doors, including a saw to cut the 1x3s. We also used a table saw to rip down our plywood, but you can have Lowe's cut it down for you instead. A nail gun and nails, and an air compressor if your nail gun isn't cordless. We also picked up a Bosch router to notch out for the recessed door handles and to make a groove along the bottom for the doors to slide. And finally, wood glue, putty and sandpaper, and stain or paint of your choice. All right, step one. Cut the plywood sheets to the size of your door. We made ours 8 feet tall and 38 inches wide so they'd be wider than the door opening when closed. Now attach the outside edges. Measure carefully and cut the 1x3s to the exact length and width of the plywood. We chose to miter our edges at 45 degrees for a cleaner look. Use wood glue and finish nails to secure the board, lining it up with the edges and clamping it in place if needed. Repeat with each side until all your edges are done. Next, measure and mark the vertical center on both the left and right side of each door. Now here's where it can get a little tricky. You have to figure out the angle to cut each cross piece at, which will vary based on the size of your door. I found it easiest to set the piece down so it lines up with the corner on one end and your center mark at the other end. Then, while it's held or clamped in place, use a straight edge to mark your cut line. With the board marked, you can place it on your miter saw and rotate the blade until it lines up. If it's not a perfect cut, you won't be able to tell after it's stained or patched and painted. Go ahead and attach the first cross piece once it's cut, and use another board to mark where your cross pieces will intersect. This time you'll have to cut two smaller boards and line the angles up with both sides of the first piece. Now that your first X is done, there's only three more to go. Just make sure to mark the boards each time, as any slight change of measurement can throw the angle way off. In no time at all, our doors were built. Before the finishing touches, make sure to fill all the nail holes and sand everything down. We also tested out our new router for the recessed door poles. You could choose to stain the doors, but since I was going for a more sophisticated look, I painted them in Tricorn Black by HDTV Home by Sherwin-Williams. Finally, the door hardware was attached. To hang the doors, we used a 13-foot double door track and follow the installation instructions to make them secure and glide smoothly. And our weekend project was a success. Goodbye, bare wall. Hello, tall, dark, and handsome. The room suddenly feels more dramatic and rich, and most importantly, the two rooms can now be separated. Projects like these that involve both form and function add value and require little time and materials are some of my favorites to do and share with you. I hope you guys like this one and be sure to check out today's blog post for more details and photos where you can also find lots of other door tutorials in the archives. We've got more projects like this coming your way so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any.